Fear of war with blacks saves a man's life. In K2461C, in an advisory dated May 24th, 1965, gives the FBI the following information. Rosario Cocchiaro, May 24th, 1965, was assaulted with a shovel by Matthew Shoemate, a Newark Nation of Islam subject, and suffered broken ribs and a collapsed lung. Rosario was hospitalized until May 26th, 1966. Rosario and Shoemate had a fight at a construction job in the Elizabeth, New Jersey area. The de Cavalcante family was initially infuriated by Shoemate's action due to Rosario's father, Frank Cocchiaro, being a de Cavalcante family member. Frank asked for satisfaction, and meetings were held to determine the family's retaliation measures. It was decided at first that Shoemate would be physically beaten. Then it was decided that Shoemate was to be murdered with a knife to make it look like a nick job. It was also considered to murder Shoemate by using a pistol due to Malcolm X being murdered by this method. In back of all this murderous intent was the specter of the NOI learning that Shoemate would have been murdered by the De Cavalcante family and the possibility that the NOI might retaliate in vengeance and cause an all-out war in the Elizabeth, New Jersey area. De Cavalcante finally decided to let this incident cool off for a month's time and persuaded the interested De Cavalcante family's members to wait for this period of time. On a seemingly ordinary day at a construction site in Elizabeth, an altercation between workers turned out to be anything but mundane. The ripple effects of this confrontation intertwined the worlds of organized crime, the civil rights movement, and religious faith in an unexpected twist of events. As U.S. cities diversified, the makeup of the people involved in the underground criminal world started to reflect this change. While the older dons of the Mafia retained control over the more significant operations, the day-to-day -day operations on the streets from small gambling to drug distribution were shifting. This cultural shift was most evident in the changing dynamics between the once-dominant Italian Mafia and the rising power of other ethnic groups. This incident in Elizabeth, New Jersey, offers a stark insight into these rapidly evolving power dynamics Matthew Shoemate, also known as Matthew X, a black foreman originally from South Carolina, found himself at the center of this nexus. Migrating to New Jersey in 1940, Shoemate became a devout follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the Nation of Islam, a black religious group that wielded a significant amount of power. This faith, deeply rooted in the teachings of Islam, became his shield in the years to come. On May 24, 1965, at a construction site bustling with activity, Shoemate instructed a young Italian laborer, Rosario Cocchiaro, to make way for an elder black worker carrying a heavy load of concrete. What should have been a simple directive turned into an altercation, with Shoemate having to defend himself physically with a shovel. Rosario sustained significant injuries, broken ribs, and a collapsed lung in the ensuing confrontation. While workplace altercations are nothing new, what sets this incident apart is the deep-rooted connections of the Cocchiaro family to the New Jersey Mafia. Unknown to Shoemate at the time, Rosario was not just any laborer. He was the son of Frank Big Frankie Cocchiaro, a known lieutenant or capo in the notorious De Cavalcante crime family, with ties spanning the underworld of New Jersey and beyond. At the helm of this family stood Simone, Sam the plumber, de Cavalcante, the boss. 
Known for his strategic leadership and his role in transforming the New Jersey Mafia into a formidable crime syndicate, De Cavalcante had a reputation that instilled both respect and fear. Sources reveal that Shoemate's defense against Rosario did not go unnoticed. Discussions in the dimly lit back rooms of Mafia hideouts revolved around seeking revenge for the affront to a family member. Ordinarily, such an act against the Mafia would result in swift and brutal retaliation. But Shoemate was no ordinary individual. His affiliation with the Nation of Islam and his role as a follower of Elijah Muhammad made him a formidable opponent. This religious connection might have saved his life. Confidential reports from the FBI unveiled a plot against Shoemate, which was under discussion for nearly four years post the incident. The incident was not just a personal affront to the Cocchiaros, but proof that black power could challenge the Mafia's supremacy. The De Cavalcante family, fearing potential repercussions and an all-out war in Elizabeth, chose caution over immediate action. This level of cautiousness was new for an organization known for its ruthless retaliation. What came next was even more surprising. A recorded conversation revealed that Sam de Cavalcante consulted with Carlo Gambino, an influential figure in the Mafia hierarchy, about the incident. The fact that Gambino, a family boss, even knew about a street-level incident like this was unprecedented. More striking was his counsel. Gambino suggested a pause in retaliation, citing the risk to the family and the larger Mafia organization. In essence, the Mafia was choosing to tread lightly. De Cavalcante and Majuri, from their conversation, now appear to be quite ready to hold retaliation in this matter in abeyance, or forgetting about it altogether. From what was said, they believe Rosario might have avoided this trouble as he started the fight. And Majuri said Rosario wasn't injured that severely. Furthermore, they said Shoemate, being a Negro, wouldn't know about showing respect to De Cavalcante family members or their children. On June 3rd, 1965, NK2461C reported the following outcome to the Rosario Shoemate incident. Concerning the Shoemate affair, Larry Wolfson, De Cavalcante's business partner, asked De Cavalcante what would be done in retribution for his Shoemate having hit that kid, Rosario, with a shovel. Sam replied, you, you can't do nothing to him. While experienced crime bosses may retain their connections to law enforcement and provide financial support to bookmakers in debt, the day-to-day -day street operations, including interactions with small-scale gamblers, offering short-term loans and engaging in drug distribution, have evolved beyond the influence of a single ethnic group. Notably, there are growing indications that other ethnic communities in the city, particularly African-American groups, are starting to challenge the once unassailable figures at the helm of organized crime. This strategic pullback was symptomatic of a larger decline in the Mafia's hold on the streets and in the unions. The Mafia's influence was waning in smaller-scale operations. While they maintained control over larger organized crimes, street-level activities such as small betting, sidewalk loans, and drug distribution began slipping through their fingers. This democratization of crime, catalyzed by socio-political changes, was setting the stage for confrontations like the one involving Shoemate and Cocchiaro. Decades of dominating street-level crime were ending. Even the likes of Gambino recognized that times were changing. New criminal and legit entities were becoming powerful players in the underworld, challenging the Mafia's dominance. It's a testament to how the socio-cultural changes in the fabric of American society were impacting even the darkest corners of the urban landscape. For Shoemate, the incident was more personal. 
He continued to work in construction, living peacefully in Newark with his family. His faith in Allah remained strong, guiding him through these trying times. In his eyes, the confrontation and its aftermath were nothing more than the will of Allah. In a world where organized crime, racial tensions, and faith often found themselves on opposing ends, the incident of May 24th stands as a unique intersection, shedding light on the complex tapestry of 1960s America. Question. Knowing the history of the Nation of Islam, what type of impact do you think this group had on the black population in America? We are interested in what you think, so comment your answer down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, and consider sending this episode to someone who might enjoy it. Because it's recommendations like this that really help to make the channel grow. You can also hit the thanks button. It's in the lower right-hand corner beneath this video and tip us in proportion to the value you feel you derive from this video. We would like to make more videos for your entertainment, but we can't do it without you, and we really appreciate your support.